offering to Srila Prabhupada from that standpoint. So I said to Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, you're the only person I trust in this world. And Srila Prabhupada said, and very humbly, very, very humbly, he said, don't trust me. I may let you down, but trust Krishna. He will never let you down. Now, this is the first realization that I had that my Srila Prabhupada is a real guru. Because Krishna says, abandon all varieties of religiosity and surrender unto me. And Srila Prabhupada said, surrender unto Krishna. Do you understand? You'll find many spiritual teachers, they want you to surrender to them. They want you to follow them. They want your money. They want their fame. They want their position. And they will exploit you. But not our Srila Prabhupada. This is Srila Prabhupada, real guru. And sometimes, you know, not everyone has had that kind of relationship, and certainly the second, third generations have, haven't experienced that kind of relationship with Srila Prabhupada. But when people would suggest to me, oh, Pushta Krishna, you should do this, or Pushta Krishna, you should do that, and this is when I was in positions of authority. I was a sannyasi. I was Srila Prabhupada's personal secretary by his choice. And I, I would come back to Srila Prabhupada and I would say, uh, you know, such and such said, do this or do that. And Srila Prabhupada, more than once, he would say to me, why are you listening to them? They are not your guru. I am your guru. Do you understand? So who do you want to follow? And who do you want to take shelter of? That's your choice. That's your choice. My advice is this, is that as we get farther away from the actual physical time of Srila Prabhupada, we still have his instructions, you see. And if someone will try to take Srila Prabhupada's honor and digest it, they will not be able to digest it. It's not possible to digest it. What you have to do is to serve him. If they will become servants of Srila Prabhupada, they are transparent via medium to Krishna. They are parampara. But if anything else comes out, I'm telling you, and this is my strong advice to you, then they are servants of their mind. So you have to be able to digest the instructions from Srila Prabhupada. Jagat Guru, Shakti Vesh Avatar, you have to be able to digest those instructions and see through those. And then if someone will tell you something that differs then you will remember what I told you from Srila Prabhupada's mouth. Why are you listening to them? They are not your guru. I am your guru. You understand? Iskan is the mission of His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. In the beginning when there were illusion and troubles and people didn't understand and I'm talking big, big devotees, didn't understand the instructions. In this temple room, at that time, after the departure of Srila Prabhupada, there were 11 Vyasasans in this room, and each thinking they will imitate Srila Prabhupada, they are Paramahansa now. But it didn't turn out to be the case, and we understand that now. So ISKCON has gone a long way in regaining its health. You understand? And that health is critical to the survival of this mission in a pure form. And that's really what I want to convey today. I have so many stories. I could sit here for 25 hours and tell you stories about Srila Prabhupada. But what I'd like to do just for a moment or two, because I know I don't have that much uh, uh, 
time is ask you if you have any questions about Srila Prabhupada that I can help you with to understand. So if any of you have any issues, any discussion, any questions, please feel free to ask and I will, to the best of my experience and ability, share with you what I think is a, an approach that would be satisfactory for Srila Prabhupada. I think it seems like people want to hear the different stories about your your experience with Srila Prabhupada. Okay. You give me five, ten minutes? You got it. Okay. All right. So let's go chronologically. When Srila Prabhupada first went to India with his many devotees, that's when Gargamuni and I came into Bombay. And Prabhupada had arranged big festivals around India. They were called pandals. And, you know, like you have the big pandals outside. These were huge. I mean, 20 times bigger than that. And people would come into the pandals and they would hear Srila Prabhupada speak and they would see the Caucasian devotees chanting and dancing. And we then would go out and introduce ourselves to the Indian public and make members there so that we could help establish the, uh, the Sankirtan movement in India. But before that time, Srila Prabhupada, because of his deep faith in Krishna and Lord Chaitanya, he deputized us. And it's amazing if you think about it. We were young people, had been in Krishna consciousness six months, a year, maybe a little longer, and he deputized us to go all over the world and on his behalf present Krishna consciousness. Brahmananda Prabhu went to uh, East Africa, Srila Prabhupada sent Shruti Das, who's here, and uh, uh, Rishi Kumar, and later, uh, shortly thereafter, me, to help develop South Africa, which now has millions of followers of Krishna. And uh, in Europe, you've seen Dhananjaya Prabhu has talked about his experiences there, how Gurudas and Shamasundar and Jamuna and others went to uh, London and some of those uh, pastimes of starting Krishna consciousness there. In France, Yogeshwar Prabhu was in France. I spent time in France before going to South Africa. And all throughout America, we went and started temples. Uh, Gainesville was started in the early days, and Amarendra and his family and others developed that, and that's where Alachua came about. And uh, from there I went down to Tampa, and then we went to Houston. And all over the country, there were hundreds of temples, really. And this by people who were just barely introduced to Krishna consciousness themselves. But why did Srila Prabhupada allow this to happen? It wasn't like he said, no, I'll go there and, and preach. No, he said, you go there and you preach on my behalf. Do you understand? He had so much faith and confidence in us and he had confidence in Lord Chaitanya that this would be accomplished. And for the most part, it was. It's a really an amazing phenomenon. Not that you had to be uh, a PhD in Krishna consciousness to do this. 